Jim, how are you? Hold on. You're, you're on mute. How's that? I can hear you now. Good. Ah, you're standing up and I'm sitting down. Okay. Yeah, and I, I got, got you one better. I got a wobble board here. Oh, so you're doing that. <laughs> right, okay, I, this is going to be interesting. So I'll stand on my wobble board while I'm working. And we'll see how long before I tip over. That brings up to mind a joke about, never mind. Are we live right now? Because <laughs> we, we are live and streaming to YouTube and Frank uh, Weber is over on YouTube listening. Awesome. Awesome. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. The reason why I'm streaming to YouTube is I just learned the hard way that a lot of people don't come in for, you know, when you say it's at five o'clock. Right. They got other things to do. Sure. And so then you can put it out there and say, hey, you know, listen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We're living in interesting times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How have you been? It's been a long time since I've seen, I've seen anybody in person, but you look great. You've had there a few changes, huh? Uh, a few uh, shifts in your career, which all seem extremely positive. They're all positive shifts. Excellent. Um, I have no complaints. Um, no. I got my water bottle. Yep, me too. <laughs> Recycling. Yep. I got my coffee cup. Amen. <laughs> I'm a two-fisted drinker. Amen. Yeah. Database I just said. Is, yes, uh, go ahead. Database security is turning into an interesting subject. Uh, about every 20 minutes, we have something new happening, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It's crazy, and I, I'm reminded of um, 2000, it was either 18 or 19. I was at a four-letter government agency. Okay, okay. that narrows it down. three-letter agency, but a four-letter agency. I won't give, uh -huh. I won't okay. say the name in public because this was rather embarrassing. And I was talking to their director of information security. Right. Doing database security assessments. Okay. And he proudly informed me he has got the best sensors money can buy on his network and he did not need any database security assessments. Of, of course not. About two months later in the Washington Post, the New York Times, Yahoo, and a few other places announced a massive database leak due to a misconfigured database. That sounds painful. Yeah. That sounds painful. Yeah. Part of me wanted to call the guy and say, would you like my services now? Oh, that's painful. That is painful. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. As we were talking about topics, uh, I flash back to my first real DBA job. Uh, and it was for uh, a reasonably sized company. And mm -hmm. the oh. about two years into my tenor, ten, tenor, tenure, 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 <laughs> tenure, we had somebody come in and do a pen test. Okay. And so this is like 2003, 2002, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And the guys got inside and were able to get to the production password for the, 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 the password for the production database inside of two hours. I believe it. And the way they did it is through a compromised email address. I'm sorry, a compromised login, ironically from, again, we had about 500 people that worked at this company. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very, um, today we would say agile. Yes. Uh, back then it was just controlled chaos. Mm -hmm. It was the user account of the director of accounting. And she made her password the same as her login. And they and made I an intelligent guess. And 
so here's my naivete. Oracle database running on Windows, why mm -hmm. I don't even want to go back there, but I was upset because they printed in the document the mm -hmm. production password to the database, and I was upset because I really didn't know what the impact would be if we had to go change that password, so I wanted them to strike it out. Not that we have been broached, <laughs> yeah. and that's with 20 plus years of IT experience. That's right. where I was coming from. Yeah. So when we think about this today, you know, it's 20 years later, roughly, and your colleague at the four letter agency, I'm already scrolling through the list of possibles here. Uh, <laughs> um, you yeah, know, the they, attitude they, they hasn't changed. something to do with space. Uh, okay. Probably, I think, okay. And a couple of vowels. Okay, we're there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know those fellows. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's interesting from that perspective that people don't take database security, uh, regardless of the database. And again, my specialty is Oracle, but I've worked on Informix, I've worked on DB2, I've worked on Teradata, I've worked in non-relational databases, right? And security mm -hmm. was never really one of our concerns. We never really thought about it that much yeah. uh, until it was too late. Yep, and now the database holds the crown jewels. Yeah. Uh, what, one of the things that I have been seeing ever since I started this, your information security people, they're really sharp on the network. They're really sharp on their, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, intrusion detection and their firewalls. Right. They don't understand how the database works and, and that's yes. why why i originally one of the reasons i originally got into this because at a uh, a very large federal agency i kept getting emails from the information security people asking me why does this have dba privileges okay and I would have to, you know, take the guy aside and explain to him, you know, yeah. who sys is and whose system is, right. and all of these built-in accounts and how they actually operate. Right. And once he understood that, right, I stopped get I I continued get, getting interesting questions that were easily answered. However, he started understanding how the database actually operated so we could actually work in partnership with each other Got as it. opposed to, to... Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Instead of button heads. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because I, I, I butted heads with people all the time. You know, anybody I, know? I can't imagine with your personality if that would ever happen. Well, my wife says my... <laughs> My wife says my three best qualities is I'm stubborn, pig-headed, and obstinate. <laughs> and as those an are, English major, those are wonderful synonyms. <laughs> and those are my three best qualities. And those are your three, yeah. <laughs> Please, the wife is upstairs. Let's not, I don't want to even go there. Um, oh, but, oh I, no. I need to talk to her. <laughs> no, just have your wife call. There's, it's a secret society. They, they're already talking to each other. That's yeah, the way yeah they're already talking to each other. <laughs> and if Haley, uh, Haley from Finland's on this, she's already calling my wife. Ruth, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. I, well, we're, we're both in trouble. Oh, yeah. That, well, we're always in trouble. But <laughs> well, Haley knows candy too. Oh, God. Oh, we're, we're dead. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's an interesting topic, though, you know, because. Um, just especially with, you know, Oracle is touting so much. And again, I know I'm talking about Oracle, but it's what I'm most familiar with, right? Yes, touting, yeah. you know, we have the autonomous database and we have the cloud and we have all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I was talking with uh, uh, Karen Lopez just in a general chat about things last week. And we were talking about things like, well, where do you put your business logic? Does mm -hmm. it still go inside the application or does it go inside the database? You know, mm -hmm. uh, where do you put this? Where do you put that? And again, so many people, and this is really a database security issue, right, Rob? But it's, well, no, no, let's put all that stuff inside the application. 
Mm -hmm. And let's do this and let's do that. Let's do the validation even inside the application. And Karen's comment to me was, and the real challenge with that is these people don't understand SQL injection. And they yeah. don't understand that if you don't um, think about security at the beginning, right? And you mm -hmm. don't use the framework properly, right? Right. Um, and I was telling her a story that the first real serious power builder job I ever had mm -hmm. was for the American Medical Association here mm -hmm. in Chicago. And our CIO, I was just a contractor on the project, said, if I catch you, anybody on this team, putting SQL directly inside the application itself, mm -hmm. one line of SQL, you're fired. Right. And they had built this marvelous framework that essentially it was Power Builder, right? But I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the Apex Power Builder, I mean, you know, you're still finally talking to some middle layer. Everything was done by stored procedure. Right. Everything was stored procedure, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually remember I had to write some code that this was an Informix database uh, that actually Informix didn't have a way to talk to lobs. Mm -hmm. So I was going to have to invoke a some code that was going to write a blob. We were actually right. writing images into the database, pictures of people. And I was mm -hmm. terrified that I was going to get fired for this. And today, people just aren't thinking the right way about stuff. Everything's agile, right? Everything's let's get it done as quickly as possible, which again, from my perspective is let's do it with the least amount of restriction yeah. and anything to do to get around that DBA. Cause that stands for don't bother asking, you know, cause well, we're just yeah. going to tell you no. So yeah. anyway, that's kind of a long that's polemic. You, that, where we are that today. is the DBA's job. Say no. Well, to say it really should be, are you sure is that's what you want to do? Is that really, I, are you, have you thought about is a better way of putting it in good, my opinion. Good, good DBAs are like that. Right. And, and, and I've worked with some great DBAs in my lifetime that I've learned a lot from. Uh, and, and, you know, I change hats. I'm either a designer or a developer or a DBA or just the general guy who goes around causing problems. You know, that, okay. that's who I am. <laughs> that's us. But, but it's interesting that you say that. The more code that you put outside of the database, right. the larger the attack surface. Excellent point. You know, keep going. It, I like it, this. It, it is a yeah. much larger attack surface hmm. because you're moving more data through right. the pipe. Exactly. Exactly. All right. And then also the code is more vulnerable when it sits outside of the database. Sure. Exactly. All right. Because you're one layer closer to the bad people. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and that's why, you know, I've been trying to teach people and I work with uh, Bren on this for a while on the code-based access control. Right. I remember that presentation. I, I that didn't you did that at hot sauce many years ago, didn't you? I did it at hot sauce. I remember uh, that. And I'm still doing it because very few people are actually using it. Right. Right. And it, and it made, you, I remember seeing like, that. There's a whole chapter sense. in my uh, last book on it. Okay. Awesome. When did that come out? How recent? Uh, that was November, 2019. 2019. Okay. Yeah. And I swore it would be the, my last book. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and I'm working on a, I'm working on another book. <laughs> Good. Maybe something to do with security. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. absolutely. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's really interesting because if you move all the code or as much code as reasonable into the database and use code-based access control, you no longer actually have to grant access to the underlying database objects. Right. Sure. You grant access to the code. And then exactly. you have a fine-grained control over the privileges uh, you give to the code. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And I think you and I have talked about this, and I remember when I was teaching 
basic database administration. By the way, I became a much better DBA after I started teaching Oracle classes. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, seriously. Um, I, it, there's an old saying that if you want to master something, teach it. Amen. And I found out, you know, there was so much I didn't know. And I remember kind of doing the pyramid of, you know, access. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, at the very bottom, here's the minimal amount of database objects, right? Could mm -hmm. be views, but more likely tables, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, views sitting on top of the tables, perhaps. Here's the minimum number of objects that everybody needs in the company. Right. right. Everybody needs to know the company ad, you know, phone, whatever, list of employees, right? We're talking inside the company. Perhaps these people need this, perhaps need, and then everything else, you know, heads up towards the top of that. Mm -hmm. And so many organizations seem to be blind to this. Yeah, or you know, they just see it as a massive, uh, they can't get their heads around it, you know. But this idea of um, oh, what's the right term that we use for Based that? Privilege. Yes, right, right. So, you know, it should be, if you, if you want that privilege, I would much, as I used to tell students, right? I would much rather you come to me and say, I can't get access to this. Right. Please grant me access than to say, oh, whatever, insert appropriate swear word, mm -hmm. we got hacked. I would mm -hmm. much rather you go, you know, the CIO's PO because he can't see or the CEO can't see this particular bit of finance information or the head of finance can't see this information about uh, whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. right? Employees. And you go, well, wait a minute, why did he need that? And they would say, if the person turned around on their tail and walked out, I would go, wait a minute, why does the guy in finance need to know their boss's salary? You know, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, something's wrong there. And I'm going to go talk to the corporate security administrator and go, something's not right here, you know? Right. So that's where I came from with that. And I was, I was amazed at how many people would just go like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Why didn't they teach me this in college? Or why, didn't my DB, why doesn't my DBA understand this? Mm -hmm. So does that make sense, I guess? I'm, I'm, I'm talking more than I should be listening, which is never a good thing mm -hmm. for me. No, 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 no. We, we like it when you talk because then you can come up with some really good questions. But yeah, and, and, and there, there's another issue. You know, I, mm. I remember building code back in the 19... Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. And to get things to work, it's like, okay, we'll just grant DBA and we'll figure <gasps> it out later. <gasps> no. No, no, no. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and then you wind up deploying a, a package into production that is way overprivileged. Yes, exactly. And fortunately, in uh, 12, 1 or 12, 2, don't quote me on the version, Enterprise know, Edition, going. Yeah, you can now run, uh, oh God, what is it called? Privilege capture. Yes, right. Where well, you can, can go through how and see. Are yes. actually doing things. Right, right. And you can see things. Yeah, privilege capture was, I think that's a 12 1 feature. Might be 12 yeah. something feature. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's just amazing. You know, so you can see things like, wait a minute, why did I grant someone select any table privilege, right? Or whatever privilege it is. But the other thing about that I like is you can actually see and who's used those privileges, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and this is all built into, I, yeah, I think you're right exactly in either 12.1 or 11.2 when they came up with the new auditing, which needed an overhaul anyway, oh, right? yeah. for Oracle specifically, so that it was easier to find this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, in the classic auditing, you had, how many audit trails? I forget. Oh, yeah, there were at least four, if I remember. Yeah. And, uh, depending and, if you deployed fine grain auditing, which yeah. was another story. Uh, and now with unified auditing, it's all in unified one auditing. right place to find it. Exactly. Uh, but it, one of the things interesting on privilege capture, you know how roles, you will cascade privileges? Yes, right. Okay. 
you have to also see how those privileges are cascaded in there. And if you, yep. and me, I, I, I'm the guy who draws pictures, mm-hmm. you know, and I have to have a picture, you know, sometimes it's stick figures, you know, which is about the, the extent of my art. <laughs> yeah. I failed art class. I spent that money on computer science classes. Yeah, good, good, good approach. <laughs> well, it, it paid for itself. Yeah. Uh, but what you will see is these really complex cascading privileges. Mm. And then it gets down to, let's say, the accounts payable clerk. Right. Okay. But inadvertently through this cascading privilege, they also have accounts receivable, some accounts receivable privileges in there. Hmm. And I've seen that. Right. And why? Well, you know, it's, it's because, because of the cascading, right? It's Basically. because of the cascading and what the, you know, it's like as developers and designers, it's like we have to get the product out the door. Right. Yeah. You know, the boss is breathing down our neck for a hundred different reasons. And we have to get the product out the door and operational. Yep. Agreed. So now, you know, it's like security was always the afterthought. Yes. Right. And it right. scares me. And we should be, how does that go? Be afraid, be very afraid. We should mm-hmm. be, we should be afraid. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, the, and you deal with this and you've dealt with this in the past, you know, on an official basis at a, at a mm-hmm. national security level. I know that. I know you can't tell me more than you'd have to kill me. Yeah. Um, but well, <laughs> it, it won't be me killing you now because, you know, it'll probably be, you know, mm, I can probably come up with a couple names. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's, You're welcome. That's, how pleasurable. Uh, <laughs> yes. Why, why can't I fly to Nashville? Oh, this guy, Ron Blocker. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, so I was kind of going there with, you know, just the way things are done, right? And, you know, this, everything is sacrificed on the altar of speed, yes. you know, for, because things, we have to be agile. And mm-hmm. I, I remember I had a colleague who used to say, well, we'll get this done quick and dirty quick and dirty and quick. And one day I actually looked up quick and dirty and the actual definition in computing is, mm-hmm. is essentially where uh, security, data coherence, data veracity, uh, access points and everything else is sacrificed in the altar of speed for no good reason, because right. it doesn't take that much longer to mm-hmm. impact things, right? To, to make things work better. Mm-hmm. Um, it was interesting too, uh, again, staying on the Oracle trend for a bit. When I went, I had a really neat experience with this when Charles Kim and I were writing our book uh, on PDBs. I think mm-hmm. it was the one, PDB Me to the Cloud. I'm sure everybody's seen it, right? It's just a thin mm-hmm. book. It's the only book that I am aware of that has two ACE directors having beer, having a beer together on the back cover, which may lead to its popularity. But <laughs> anyway, in, in the process of doing that, right, Charles would tell me things, you know, like, okay, so this week we're going to do everything in the cloud because we're going to mm-hmm. use this to do that. I'm like, okay, great. So now we're going to do PDB stuff in the cloud. Wonderful. I can do that. Uh, okay. I'm going to try to do certain things and, and so forth and so on. And within 10 minutes, because of the security that's implicit in everything we do in the cloud, Right. I was having difficulty doing things like creating a table space, having mm-hmm. difficulty creating object, you know, or you could create the table space and then, oh crap, you can't add any. And by the way, crap stands for can't run any programs. Um, yeah. You can't, you can't uh, insert rows into a table. You can't even add a table. You can't. And I'm like, oh, geez, I'm going to turn all this security off. So I tried to do it for about a week. And I was just like, you know, like what you're doing, right? And I finally got a hold of somebody at Oracle and an, actually another ACE director. And I said, so should I even, and he's just like, stop. Even if you could turn the security off, 
you mm-hmm. would break so much shit. You would break so much stuff mm-hmm. that your database would be useless. Right. And so we just, now again, that was 12C release one, like 12102. Oh, 12, God. Yeah. The cloud was painful back then. Oh, yeah. Oh the database God. was even. Yeah. Yes. And so things have changed a lot more now because some stuff was at the container database level, some was at the uh, pluggable or PDB level. And it was a nightmare. But, it, you know, and you had to figure some of this stuff out in terms of things like, I don't want to say wallets, but um, essentially the concept of a wallet and other things. And you had to learn how to do all this stuff. But the whole idea was, if somebody's walking into this for the first time yeah. and security is an afterthought, we have to assume that they'll never implement it. Exactly. And so well, things, and go ahead. Uh, also, when security is an afterthought and you start bolting security in, you start breaking things. Exactly. Exactly. You know, the, 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 right? the new buzz is DevSecOps. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, 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 we can talk on DevSecOps later because I'm still trying. I, I've wrapped my head around it, but okay. I'm not prepared to talk about it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, uh, otherwise, I will sound like an idiot. Okay, mm-hmm. I get which you. Is, which is normal. Mm-hmm. Which is normal. Yeah. I thought it was part of the qualification for ACE director, but keep going. Uh- <laughs> I have a practice. Do you do this too? I will write down as I'm going through my day what I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, I, 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 you know, that's just, just like a, that, that side note. It's like, you know, people assume that we are ace directors, therefore we have all knowledge. Oh, God, no. And, and <laughs> God. Even, I know, I know. Even in my specialty, I'm daily coming across things. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Right, right. You know, it's, and like, it's like, yeah. yeah. I recently had a thing where somebody's uh, system was not auditing. Okay. Okay. It was not generating any audit. Wow. An audit was turned on. Well, it turned out what they were doing was they were auditing across the database link. You can't audit a database link. You have to audit an object. Okay, got or it. an action. Right. And if you audit the database link and unified auditing, it will show up on the server side uh, database. Okay. With all, all the DB link information, et cetera. So you can point uh, backwards. I didn't know that. Okay, which makes sense, right? Yeah. But it's not what you want. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, what we'll, we'll do is we'll create a view against the database link and just have them select against the view and then audit the view. Okay. And that's the proper solution because I don't know. I mean, well, I haven't if hit you that. want the audit trail on, on, on the source server, the, the, where you're starting from. Yeah. The source server, Makes you sense. have to audit something there. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Huh. All right. I don't think I've ever, ever run up against that, but that's an interesting challenge. And you're right. That's another thing. No, I've got a list of things that I simply know nothing about that I come across every day. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's where, I mean, that's one of the things that keeps me really interested in this. Like people said, so I was just at a family member. So you're retired. And I'm like, no, I'm on sabbatical. Well, how yeah. long is that going to be for? Um, well, I just did my retirement forecast out to 110. <sighs> you know, so I've got at least 35 or, or 45 years, depending on you know, what, what health's been granted to me via my genetics um, and hopefully some good living. And, you know, the thing is, there's so many things that I haven't even had a chance to explore and so right. many things I really want to, you know, get more experience with. The thing about, back to our kind of our database security thing of this, and it's interesting, uh, you know, we've been doing our podcast, beyondtechskills.com. By the way, mm-hmm. we would love to have you as a guest. I talked with my co-podcaster. We'll okay. figure out something interesting, fishing, right. boats, airplanes, why Both. pilots should be better DBAs, uh, or whatever you want to talk about. 
but oh. um, yes, suggested topic. <laughs> I can suggest a few topics. Oh, okay. We'll take that offline. This is your show, but okay, okay. <laughs> this is my show. That's your show, but, but um, go ahead. some of the some of the people we've been talking to. I we just did a, a podcast with Karen Lopez, as I mentioned, and we've been talking with a bunch of other aces and other people and stuff like this, right? And the thing is that we're not thinking about the way the real world works. Exactly. And or I should say the real world of somebody in dev ops, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, today, the data is literally, quite literally everywhere, right? Yes. So I, I, I did this great little map, kind of a uh, high level data map of, okay, so assume you're a modern uh, power utility, you know, you're supposed to get electricity from here to here, right? Right. Or I guess here to here. And so here's all your data sources. And I said, so, you know, here's your data model. Unfortunately, this is in an Excel spreadsheet over here somewhere. Right. This is in an AWS uh, cloud, right? It's sitting mm -hmm. out on, on a, uh, as a flat file, a bunch of CSV files, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't move them. They got to stay where they're at because you got a contractual obligation. You got something else out in HDFS. You got a bunch of other stuff inside the database, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not like it was 20 years ago. Hell, like it was five years ago, right, Graham? Things are just disparate. They're flung everywhere. And with good reason, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff's got to stay where it has to stay. Right. So if you're thinking that you've got this off in an S3 on AWS, right? You hope that the security there is valid. Mm -hmm. You hope everything's working okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're accessing that from inside an Oracle instance or you know a Google Google Cloud Platform um, Enterprise DB, you know, or Postgres SQL database, right? Mm -hmm. How do you audit for that? How do you know that people are touching data that really mm -hmm. isn't inside your database environment, but it's being touched? Right. And do you need to audit for that, right? And this is not going to change. This is going to get crazier as time well, goes on. Well, yeah, you have the multi-cloud. Oh, yes. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about multi-cloud. Yeah. These hybrid environments, and they're right. all going to be different. Yes. Okay. Because what works for one customer, the other customer is like, no. Uh, exactly. Every customer is different. Yeah, exactly. And so you're going to you're going to have to deal with things like that. So how is it being audited over here on AWS? Right. How is it being audited here on uh, OCI? How's it being audited over here on Azure? Right. How's it being audited on Google Cloud? Because you're going to have objects spread all across the enterprise, and then also right. you know. Uh, Jane's laptop who has the one copy of the spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> With the passwords in it, right? With the passwords in it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh. God it, 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 oh. funny, funny story. And this has to do with security. Hmm. I was flying from Washington to San Francisco. Okay. All right. And I'm sitting up there and I'm comfortable and I'm eating my meal. This was a couple of years back. And the gentleman next to me had his laptop open, had a spreadsheet, and it was the quarterly reporting numbers for a very large publicly traded company. Okay. The, 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 the one part of me who wanted to go sell <laughs> that's bad huh? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have i didn't have any stock in that company so i struck up a conversation with them and i'm like going dude dude put something there yeah. so nobody can read your screen it's called vishing yeah Vis exactly visual, visual or backing or they, they've got Visual, uh, yeah, you can yes. see the screen. They have a okay. word for it. They got a word for everything. 
Yes. And put something there. And we get into this conversation. He goes, my security people have made it so difficult for me to do my job. I have to download all the information onto my laptop just to do my job. That is the other problem we're facing. Yes. If yes, they can't right. do their job, believe me, our users are smart. Yep. They will figure out a way to do their job. Right. Right. So, you know, it's like you, you can make it really tight and, you know, annoy a lot of people, and then they're just going to start breaking policy. Right. Exactly. Just exactly. to do their job. And I, I agree with you. Um, I've worked at at least two really large, I don't want to say fintech, but financial companies. One was a major insurer, mm -hmm. if I could do the symbol. And another one was one, of, yeah, right. Um, based here in, I train a lot of their DBAs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Based just here in Northern suburbs of Chicago. And also at one of the three uh, credit reporting bureaus. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed with the fact that they took security of their customer data extremely seriously. Yes. You know? um, but as someone that was, uh, the, the large one that I was working for was an Exadata project, the uh, uh, credit reporting agency. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I really, we were talking about something simple like, how do we partition the data in this table? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we can't show you the data. Well, how can I make an intelligent decision on that? I mean, I'm a DBA. I don't even know who these people are. I could care less about the data. Mm -hmm. But unless I can make a, an intelligent decision about how the data is distributed, I can't tell you what the partitioning keys need to be right, right for it to work better. Mm -hmm. I need to look at that kind of stuff. And you're exactly right. And, you know, so here I am a DBA developer trying mm -hmm. to make their Exadata database machine run as efficiently as possible. And I can't even look at the data, you know, and they can't, these were the DBAs I'm working with. They can't even look at the data. And so what do we end up doing? You know, do we, eventually somebody has to kind of like, you have to kind of look over someone's shoulder almost mm -hmm. to be able to see stuff. So it's just like, is it any different than that guy with the spreadsheet on the airplane? I mean, right. And I know you travel a lot foreign wise, right? You've given me great advice on you go, if you go east of this, <laughs> east of this, of this longitude, carry a burner phone and a bur burner laptop, basically, right? You know? Um, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And, and, and a burner lap and burner batteries. Burner batteries? You know, the bat you know the batteries you carry around? Hold on just a second. Yeah. Uh oh. Hold Wait, on one second. Something can happen with batteries. You know, the, you know these batteries, sure. a burner battery. You mean for like, you think mean for. It. Think about it. You are a foreign intelligence entity. Oh. Okay. Okay. And you're charging up your battery in your room. Right. Okay. They bring their technical expertise in and they go, they got this battery right here. We'll give him another battery that's going to put malware on everything plugged in oh, and crap. also connect to the internet and send all kinds of shit back. Excuse oh, me, I shouldn't man. say that, but well, I carry yeah, burner Yeah, I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that. I carry wow. burner phones. Right. I carry a burner laptop. Yeah. I'm paranoid. But just because I'm justifiably so. Right? Yeah. Well, it's because of what I what I've seen in my lifetime. Right. Right. And there are bad right. actors. Oh, there are decidedly bro. bad actors in Eastern Europe and well, parts no, of and all over the world. Not just Eastern Europe. Europe. Yep. It, it I know we think of it that way, but yeah, right. You know, there there are some places that are worse than others. Right. Whether Believe it or not, if I'm in London, I'm carrying a burner battery, a burner phone, and a burner computer. And that's an interesting point you're making, Rob, because a lot of people, right, uh, the GRU, right, focused mm -hmm. on people, uh, or focused on hotels, 
where executives like to stay. Yes. And you know what? What you know? It's like you know, somebody coming to my neighborhood and they go, well, is it safe here? You know, obviously crime wise, I'm going, well, yeah, it sure looks safe. Doesn't it? Where do the wolves go? Nah, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that's where that's they exactly, go. Exactly. You know, you know, Oh, I left my car. Somebody stole something out of my car. Well, was it locked? Well, no. Was it outside? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's in your garage? All kinds of junk, but not my car. You know, so, I mean, I didn't know London, though. I have to keep that in mind. That's kind of scary. Every place I go. Wow. Wow. So maybe Raleigh, North Carolina. Good. Everything's burner. Why Raleigh? That's interesting. Is there any, I mean, I know you're not that far from Virginia and the tech quarter, but just. Yeah, but uh, have I ever told you the story of the evil maid? No, I'd love to hear the story of the evil maid. Now, now, oh, I don't, that grin this looks really scary, Rob. <laughs> Tell me about it. The evil, uh, this gets off database security, but it is security in general. Maids don't make that much money. Granted. Okay. Here's $500. I want you to swap out his battery with this battery. I want you to plug his phone into this device and turn uh -huh. it on while it's charging. I want you to plug a, this USB into his computer. Right. right. Here's $500. Yeah. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did I put an accent on that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Criminal elements. Oh, yeah. You got foreign intelligence elements. Just because you're in the United States doesn't mean foreign intelligence is not operating here. Agreed. Agreed. So you go to ECOUG. Okay. Or you go uh, East Coast Oracle Users Group. Or you go to, let's say, collaborate. Mm -hmm. Or whatever it's called these days. Or, or yeah. <laughs> it's two things you now. Go think, to, right? You yeah. go to a conference where a lot of technical people are going to be coming in to listen and they have access to systems. Right. It is a target rich environment. I never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. It is yeah. an absolute target rich environment. Now I'm, I now, came into this happy, but now I'm scared crapless. Uh, if I was SVR, if I was GRU, uh, the only KGB left, I think, is Belarus. They still have KGB. If I was any foreign intelligence entity, including MI6, I would be there. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned that too, because a lot of the things that we're talking about, right, the compromised maid and things like that. I don't know if you ever watched Mr. Robot. Yes. You know, I loved the emphasis on social engineering mm -hmm. because there was one episode that I recall. If you haven't seen the show, by the way, it's people actually type real code in real computers. You know, it's not this, you know, I'm going to type in a, you know, plain English language phrase. Mm -hmm. But one of the ones I remember, Elliot had to break out, Elliot's the major character, uh, break some guy out of prison. And so his solution was, no, 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 I'm going to compromise the system. I'm just going to open up all of the prison cells at once because I can't figure out exactly where this guy is. And the way he did it, was I think he sent his sister into the parking lot and she just dropped a bunch of uh, thumb drives mm -hmm. in the parking lot. And so when he went, oh, took it, plugged it into their machine mm -hmm. inside, 30 seconds later, he was inside, you know? And that's how quick, like you're saying, if they're a professional actor and they understand how systems work, mm -hmm. You have no idea how quickly people can break in their stuff. Uh, I, every now and then, uh, I, I will get a part, be a part of a red team, which is just, which is fun. Awesome. Which is fun. Yeah. It, 
let me tell you the rule. There's a rule of thumb. 90%, over 90% of the um, compromised systems have to do with social engineering mm. because it's easier to hack a human yes. than to go toe to toe with the firewall or their IDS. Exactly. And so one exactly. of the things we did, we hired some very cute girls, gave them thumb drives and said, oh, there's a band tonight you know, at this place. Here's some of their music. I hope I see you there. With the thumb drive. With the thumb drives. Here, listen uh. to the music. I really hope I see you there. And guess what? These thumb drives were pinging back left, right, and center. Wow. And so what would you, and so would, what was the uptake? You think it was 90% basically of the 90% of the people you went after? Um, I'm going to say probably 40% of the people who were male under 20, under 30. <laughs> ah, that good old bro dev culture. <laughs> Which this is why we need more women in IT. Really, yeah, seriously, we because they would go. Seriously, do. now a lot of those thumb drives got plugged in at home. Yeah, still not a good place to plug it in. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, because it's easier to hack the human. Yeah, yeah. And you've been in my presentations. I always started off with a, a hacking demo where I get to hack the human. Yeah, I know. I know it's, and, and again, like you're saying, it's so easy uh, because humans have cognitive biases, right? Amen. Um, if, you, if you tell people, which, which I'm trying to think what it's called, the forer syndrome, F-O-R-E-R syndrome, which is that people tend to believe things, nice things about themselves. Mm -hmm. They, even though they're, they could be applied to a wide range of people, which is basically why horoscopes work. You know, right, uh, right. You know, you, you know, Rob, I don't know if I told you this, but you know, your skill at being a storyteller are just outstanding as compared to anyone else I know. Oh, you well, know? Sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> right. Well, you I, know what I, I mean? I take uh, the knife out of my back. <laughs> Damn, Soviet. Uh, <laughs> you know, no, but that's how it works. That's how, and that's the secret, right? Um, and, and, people and this, will tend to, right. And this is what gets me, you know, everyone's saying you go into corporate IT, you know, security training. Don't click on the link. It's all of this phishing, phishing, fish. Right. There is a reason for it. Hmm. There is right. a very good reason for that. I can hack you much easier than I can go up against the firewall. Exactly. And then once I've hacked you and I, I, I can gather your credentials, right. I start moving laterally through the system. I ask, there are techniques to escalate privileges. Uh-huh, exactly, right. And the next thing you know, and the thing you're is, at the sysadmin I'm, level and- I'm right. gonna be quiet about it. Right. I'm not gonna ha have behavior to you know, make people go, oh, something's wrong. Exactly. All right. That is why you keep reading. The hacker has been in there for six months to a year. Well, it's like, come on. They, they don't go in there and try to wipe you out unless it's ransomware. That's another story entirely. Right. That's actually, you know, we haven't talked about that much, but that is something that's quite interesting where things are going with that too, in terms of, you know, recently, I thought it was interesting. Was it, it wasn't APT 29. I'm trying to think of the group that shut down that looked like the IP addresses were in Russia, but they, there was basically after some hacking, some serious ransomware had happened and they kind of disappeared. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of the group. Uh, but I, I think I, I have a theory on why these people disappeared. I do too, and I don't. Well, I don't think they disappear. People discuss I think it they just privately go. between us. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I, I don't like making people angry, but I have a 
theory of what happened and mm -hmm. it has to do with other agencies. Okay. All right. We, we'll have to take that one offline, but it, that's an offline thing. Yeah. It's, it's, let's just say very serious people. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Understood. So anyway, I just had, I know we're coming up on our hour, but I had one question for you. So are you going to make $5 million starting tomorrow? Because Mike Lindell wants everybody to go look at the data he has from the election. The, uh, you know, the data dumps, he says, that prove that Italian, uh, either Italian or Chinese satellites hacked actively into our voting system and changed the votes afterwards. Uh <laughs> Do the words click fate mean anything? <laughs> Should we be buying stock? Should we be shorting or going <laughs> or going long on my pillow stock? I'm just curious. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you uh, know, I, I think business people should stick stick to business and stay out of politics. Yeah. I don't well, care I just, what people you, you know me. I don't care what people's politics are. I agree. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I find it interesting when someone has different politics for me. You know, I, okay. I don't mind. You know, I know we are not see eye to eye, but that's what makes I know. it interesting. I know. You know? I, I know your politics. You know my politics. I think you're probably a little bit more right of center than I, you think I am. That, that well, I'm not quite. Me, Genghis I, not, Khan is a liberal. <laughs> okay. Um, because he didn't, because he hid his fortune? What? And he didn't give it all away? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm being facetious. I don't tell people my politics, although you probably know. Well, but, 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 but this is another place you can hack. Oh, yeah. And it has been done. Mm -hmm. It has been done. Um, you know, I think people forget that, shall we say, several powers went after both DNC and RNC servers in 2016. Exactly. Because target rich environment, target rich environment. Target right? rich environment. And, you know, especially with the, the, here's I think one thing you and I can both agree on. There's an enormous amount of money in politics, in the United mm -hmm. States politics these mm -hmm. days. So where would I go to compromise someone that's wealthy, where they're spending their money, right? So if I want to compromise the Koch brothers, I might go to look at a donor site to which, you know, or whoever is contributing, right? To either Democratic mm -hmm. or Republican to be US spaced or based. I'm going to go, try, I would try to go after their donor base maybe, right? Because yeah. more likely than not, it's not very well protected because why would anybody do that? You know, none of our friends are going to do anything. Well, yeah, but it that's gets the idea. Back to the database holds the crown jewels. People don't think it's valuable. It's valuable to somebody. Exactly. Exactly. You know, even for embarrassment. Precisely. Exactly. No, exactly. That, there's no financial edge to it, but there's an embarrassment edge to it. Sure, sure. But I mean, it could even be good news. Right, it could be good news that you're able to get access to, or whatever it might be. But, but even more so, like you're saying, embarrassment level, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I, I, I've had customers who I vehemently disagreed with their politics. Okay, I protect their information with the same veracity of somebody who I vehemently agree with their politics, and you want to know why. It's a very simple thing. If I compromise my integrity just once, yes. Okay. Jim will go. Was he going to compromise his integrity yep. with me? Yes, I understand. I understand. Yeah. You know, just one. All of it has to be is one time. One time. Exactly. Exactly. And this is a little I, off topic, but. It's the same way when I'm looking at a resume that's mm -hmm. obviously been dramatically inflated in terms of skills. Oh, you know, that's someone that happen. no, you know, someone that claims they have 14 years of exadata experience, even though the machine is only 11 years old. But 
you know, it's interesting, kind of a slightly different tangent here. I've finished reading a book recently. Let me let me look up the title real quickly because I think you would find this and our listeners, if there's anybody out listening there, would Wish find it fascinating. Of course they are. Uh, but uh, let me just, it was a very interesting book written by, and I know you would enjoy this because of uh, your aspect of human psychology, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I just finished reading it. In fact, I gave it to my cousin <laughs> and I wanted to have him read it because uh, he likes very interesting things apparently. Uh, but it's called, here it comes. Why is Amazon Kindle taking time to, it's on my Kindle here. Why I could just look at my phone. Uh, oh. Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. So the name of the book is The Weirdest People in the World. Oh, cool. And Are we the, in there? No, 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 no. It's not what you think, actually. What it really comes down to is, it, the guy is a psychiatrist. Uh, he's written several other books. Uh, the subtitle of the book, by the way, Rob, is How the West Became Psychologically Peculiar and Particularly Prosperous. And the oh. guy's name is... Joseph Heinrich, so H-E-N-R-I-C-H, Heinrich or Heinrich, I'm not sure. And mm -hmm. he's uh, written some really interesting stuff, but, you know, back to that topic about people inflating resumes or, you know, people lying might be a bad way, right? Mm -hmm. But this goes to kind of, uh, kind of a really interesting idea here. One of the questions that he used in the book was, Here's the scenario. You and I assume that you and I are very close cousins, first cousins, right? Okay. Or maybe I'm your uncle and you're my nephew, whatever. Close well, you, family. You are old so, enough to be my uncle. So I have some gray hair left. So we're driving along in a school district, a school, you know, zone, whatever you call it, right? Mm -hmm. 20, 20 mile an hour posted speed limit. Mm hmm. You're doing 35. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. You accidentally, completely accidentally, kid runs out in front. You strike and kill a child. Okay. You say to me, tell them I was doing only 20. Okay. How would you respond to that? And it's not important how you respond necessarily, right? Or how I would respond to it. But one of the things that humans don't understand is that Westerners, especially Northern Europeans, mm -hmm. people from England, and especially in the United States and even South America, because, you know, we were the colonizers, you know, mm -hmm. the typical answer would be, how dare you, Rob? I would never compromise my integrity, my character, or anything else. Mm -hmm. Same questions asked in everywhere from South Asia through China, through the Middle East, especially. The answer typically skewed towards, this is my family member. Of course, I'm going to lie. And it's not an ethical thing. It's not like those it's a, heathen it's savages. Cultural. It's com it's completely tribal. Mm -hmm. And the idea mm -hmm. is <laughs> a fascinating book because one of the reasons we're weird in Heinrich's view mm -hmm. is... <laughs> the marriage and family policies of the Catholic church circa 1000 AD and later. <laughs> it's a fascinating discussion, but here's the thing, human minds, human brains in Europe, especially Northern mm -hmm. Europe, more so than in Southern Europe. And of course, in the U S and other places that were colonized mm -hmm. are wired completely differently and literally are physically different than people in say the Middle East or China, India, anywhere else in the world. And that's why we tend to answer that question differently. Right. So again, the next time that you we're thinking about this conversation, which is another brilliant topic, and we have to think about where the user could be. Mm -hmm. No one would ever do that. Yes, they would. And it's That's not that they're unethical. It's mm -hmm. that they're wired, their brain. It's not, and I'm not making a value judgment. We can they're go on your different. podcast 
And oh. I can tell you why I can get along with people of completely different cultural, political, religious, ethnic background. And I get along with them. There is a very simple explanation. Which is? I wouldn't go into detail. Oh, we'll save that for the podcast. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a hint. On a cultural level, the culture has an experience, mm-hmm. which is overlaid with another experience, and they merge, and it's overlaid with another yes. experience, and they right. merge, and it's overlaid with it. And these experiences blend over thousands of years, and it creates a culture. Sure. People, on the other hand, they have an experience. There's another experience and it blends and another experience and it blends and, it's, and it blends into the personality. Okay. So when you and I talk politics and I say you're wrong and you say I'm wrong, no. If I say your politics are invalid, your culture is invalid. Mm. What I'm saying is every one yes. of those experiences you have had had in your lifetime or in your culture are invalid precisely and how am i going to react to that exactly exactly oh (laughs) right yeah i mean you know i I will only do that and buy you a beer and you know oh oh look i don't have any (laughs) i've been working on the chainsaw again (laughs) no but you see you have to understand every one of those experiences and how they blend right right into the right. culture and the person right and we can talk yes. about that on your podcast yes I have, because... lots of, I have lots of interesting theories and guess what i'm always right <laughs> no based on what i was just telling you you're weird i'm unique you're no and by the way weird it's an acronym for western educated independent religious and democratic if i remember correctly so it's it's don't actually a fascinating topic no 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 i mean little d democratic oh, you know, little d, republican little d. government yes you know okay. um, you know what With i mean little r republican government because yeah, little r republican uh, yes because uh, uh, we would have to get into a discussion for a lot of people what's a republican government versus yes republican. versus a pure democracy little d you got it. <laughs> Brother? Oh, it's always fun, brother. Are you going to be in Poland? No, I'm going in virtual, but I will tell you, I will tell you, you've got to see the social media clip that I made for it. It involves power tools. You're going to love it. I love power tools. <laughs> As do I. All right, so I Jim. see you in Poland. Hang I'm tight, going. brother. Hang loose, I should All say. Right. Later, Thank you brother. so much. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Mahalo. Mahalo.